All right, I got a real quick one here for you covering the ASDM interface. Now, ASDM is Cisco's um, kind of Java-based front end for the firewalls, the ASAs. And uh, to, to get started, how you're going to access this ASDM interface is you're going to go to the IP address of your firewall, whatever it's configured as, or if it's brand new out of the box, you may have to go into the CLI first and uh, set a interface into a VLAN that has an IP address and uh, connect yourself through that interface and put yourself on the same subnet or use DHCP th from the firewall. When you get to uh, the ASDM uh, splash page here, the, the web page, when you try and access the, the ASA's IP address, uh, you can go ahead and install the ASDM launcher. Um, you can actually run the ASDM right from here, uh, but if you have issues with your Java on your machine, uh, sometimes this uh, won't function right. There's a lot of, uh, if, you're, if you've messed with ASAs at all, you know that if your Java version isn't right, it's, it's going to complain and, and not like you very much. So that's um, the ASDM version on your firewall as well as the uh, iOS version kind of come into play with all that. But once you actually can get the ASDM opened up and you can log in with your credentials, it's going to bring you into this interface. Um, and where it starts you out at is the dashboard, the device dashboard to be specific. It's going to show you information um, that you're maybe going to want to see at a quick glance. Um, versions of your iOS and ASDM, uh, which are separate bin files that are located on your device. And you can upgrade those just like you normally would in iOS on a, on a router. You can also upgrade them from within this interface, so that's kind of nice. You're also going to see information on system resources, uh, traffic stats, your interface statuses, etc. Um, there is a quick overview down at the bottom of your syslog messages. And um, if you're on an active uh, network with lots of production traffic, you're going to see this uh, syslog messages area just flying by with different uh, messages every second, multiple messages every second. Um, you can switch over up top to the firewall dashboard. That's going to show you some more information as far as uh, what access lists have been used, some traffic overviews, um, drop packets, and scan and syntax. Um, from here, you can kind of get a general overview. Most of the time when you're going into an ASA, though, you're not really looking for this data. Uh, you're typically going in to configure something or maybe you'll look at something in more in depth. Um, another quick side note over on the left here, um, you can get to device list and bookmarks and device list you can go ahead and add other ASAs into here um, and you can go ahead and connect to them kind of on the fly through this ASDM uh, software. So moving forward uh, the next tab up in the top half here is configuration and configuration is where you're actually going to make the changes to the firewall. Um, things as simple as the interfaces you know what VLAN those interfaces are in um, and the IP addresses with those VLANs you're going to have your, your inside, your outside, your DMZ, whatever you want to set up. Routing, where you can go in and set static routes, your default route. Um, route maps, prefix rules, your different various routing protocols, your internal routing protocols. Um, device name, password. Anything that you can do from this ASDM interface, you can obviously do from the command line. And actually, what's kind of cool, you can turn on an option from within ASDM where it will show you, before you execute any commands, it will show you the intended commands it's going to execute from the CLI. So all you really have is a fancy front end for everything you can already do from the CLI, but it, it sure makes it uh, quite a bit easier for some of the things you have to set up, like uh, uh, VPN connections, crypto maps, and all that, when there's multiple different pieces that come into play that you need to configure. Um, once you're in the configuration tab, uh, what we're looking at here is your basic device setup options, but you also have different menus down below that on the lower left side where you can go into firewall, remote access VPN, site to site VPN, and device management. Firewall is going to be your access rules, um, your, uh, and this one is not touching production network, so obviously all these uh, allow rules you wouldn't want to do. Um, the, uh, the NAT rules, um, where you can transform different subnets, uh, do static NATing or uh, NAT exemptions, uh, service policy rules, AAA rules, filter rules, public servers, URL filtering, threat detection, um, basically everything you can read you can do here. When you go over to the remote access VPN, this is going to be your, um, your web-based VPN where 
users access your ASA from its IP address. They, in their web browser, they get a login page. They log in and then they're able to access internal resources, maybe an internal portal that they need to be able to VPN before they can access. It's something that's not publicly facing, but they, they can get to it once they log in. That is your clientless SSL VPN. So there's a, there's a whole section of settings for that alone. Um, and then the other option is your network client access. This is going to be your AnyConnect. Um, there is a, uh, a client-based um, piece of software uh, that basically you use to VPN into this ASA instead of using your web browser. And that's going to kind of convert your whole NIC card into uh, a tunnel over to this ASA. So all your traffic should go over that. Now you can set it up different ways um, with VPNs where you have what's called split tunneling where maybe your regular traffic to the internet still dumps out of your current connection. Uh, but anything that looks like it should be heading to this LAN uh, or internal resources goes over the VPN. Um, anyway, all the, all the connection settings for that are located here under the network client access. And then you've got uh, easy VPN um, for like uh, multi to one type, uh, like a DMVPN, similar-esque type uh, VPN connections. Uh, AAA and local users. Uh, this is where you can set up your TACX radius server and whatnot. You can uh, um, go ahead and set up local accounts as well. You obviously are going to always want at least one local account, even if you're using AAA, just in case it fails over. Uh, in fact, I would. I haven't tried, but I'm pretty sure you can't even kill at least the last local account because then you'd have no way to access this thing. Um, host uh, scan image secure desktop manager certificate management uh, you can have this the ASAs issue their own certificates and do self-signed certificates or you can import certificates that are uh, verified and uh, issued by the um, trusted publishers VeriSign and those various other um, uh, certificate management authorities that have the uh, authority to kind of sign off and say you're legit if you purchase one of those and follow up with all the required uh, um, all the required aspects that involve that uh, DHCP server you can set up your pools for your uh, um, for your various interfaces so on your say your internal subnet all your users can pull IP addresses from the ASA uh, DNS settings and then a couple of advanced settings down here uh, I'll go ahead and I guess cover the wizards right here while I'm while I'm in this page because when you go up to wizards and you go to VPN wizards, you can see over here you've got site to site VPN wizard which I haven't covered yet because that's in the next tab down on the bottom left. You have any connect VPN wizard we talked about a minute ago, which is a client application that VPNs kind of your whole uh, your whole network over to this ASA. The clientless SSL, SSL VPN wizard is the uh, web based one that I had mentioned initially and your IPsec Ike v1 uh, remote access VPN wizard. Now these wizards are going to be your easy surefire method to set up a, a VPN connection. You may have to do some tweaking afterwards but this is going to get the main moving parts um, in place where they need to be and it's going to run you through in a really easy method to do so. For example the AnyConnect VPN wizard it's literally it shows you all the steps that you're going to go through and you next your way through them setting up various things that it asks you to set up um, so it's pretty foolproof to be able to set this up um, and just kind of follow everything along set up your client image for any connect that uh, they can use etc um, and once you're done it will it will go ahead and set you up a uh, set you up a any connect connection profile or if you're doing the SSL it'll set you up a connection profile for that as well as all the associated kind of um, dependencies that uh, relate to that so the VPN wizards are up there in the wizards menu item so don't forget about the menu toolbar up top because uh, there's a lot that you can do with it that are um, that are definitely efficient tools and uh, things you're gonna wanna have uh, in your tool belt so you can also do um, while I'm looking around in here, uh, the other one I'll cover is the packet capture wizard. And basically what you can do with this is you can um, specify, it's kind of like making an ACL that you would capture packets off of, but it does it on the fly here for you based off some information you put in. So you can use an ACL already created, you can specify which host and um, source and destination network that 
the packets that you're trying to capture are coming from, going to, and what interface you want to uh, capture on. There's a couple more steps in there, but it basically at the end gets you to a, uh, a buffer window where it will refresh every so often and show you packets that come through that match what you're looking for. So this is a good way to troubleshoot VPNs that maybe aren't initially coming up. You can use that to keep an eye out for the traffic that uh, uh, should be coming in in order to create those. Um, or various other reasons that you can think of to capture packets. The ASA is a very efficient tool to be able to do so. The other way you can do it is um, you can go into the logging and you can search for traffic coming from specific hosts or subnets. Uh, I'll cover logging in a minute. So, um, yeah, just keep in mind this wizard's toolbar up, up here will we'll help you out. Site to site VPN, you saw the wizard for that up there in the, the menus. And site to site VPN is basically an ASA to an ASA or an ASA to a router, kind of a one-to-one -one network device to network device configuration of a VPN tunnel. Um, so that's going to allow you to maybe use a remote branch and tie it in over the internet into your headquarters branch and access internal resources without making them publicly accessible at the same time. Um, and in essence, you could also dump them out of your internet connection if you had any reason to. You could uh, connect remote uh, phones, remote VoIP phones to your internal um, PBX server, whatever you want to do. So that is a site-to-site -site VPN. It's not an actual user tying in when they want. It's uh, kind of a always-on, as long as there's not an issue, uh, VPN tunnel between two network devices. Um, again, there's a wizard to set that up as well. Um, device management is going to be things like accessing this ASDM interface, SSH, your various management controls, uh, access lists to prevent the wrong people from accessing these, um, and various other kind of administrative settings you're going to want to set. And that covers the majority of what's in the configuration tab. When you go over to monitoring, um, you have your own set of tabs down here. Um, there's your basic monitoring of ARP table, DHCP, your basic networking uh, components that are in play, or uh, services rather, and uh, you move down to the VPN kind of section down here, and this is going to let you see your active site-to-site um, -site, uh, VPN connections, remote access, any connect. All remote access is going to cover like your any connect, your client lists, um, your IPsec, IPv1. Um, and you're going to see any actively engaged users or connections that are coming in. They're going to show up down here um, with various metrics and settings about those. Um, again, there's plenty you can dive into on the monitoring capabilities of different VPN connections. Um, and again, you can do any of these from the command line also. Uh, routing, monitoring routing is going to show you your uh, various internal gateway routing protocol, maybe neighbors and your routes. Uh, your route should show your... Uh, kind of all your routes from your routing protocols as well as static um, properties. Uh, there's kind of a, uh, a slew of different things you can configure, or not configure rather, but monitor down in this section. Um, and logging. Now logging, you can go into the log buffer and you can specify your own logging level. Um, that you want to kind of trap by or things that you want to see um, and that's standard just like you're logging on a router or whatnot and buffer is going to show you kind of old entries things that have already been logged you can also do what's called the real-time log buffer and likely mine isn't going to have much going on because this is not a production device but um, <laughs> in an ideal world or in a uh, corporate setting with production traffic you're going to see kind of like on that home dashboard you're going to see a lot of traffic flying by here um, things such as ACLs being applied denying packets um, connections being established for VPN tunnels etc um, and you can filter it's going to be hard to show an example without any live traffic uh, maybe I can go back to the log bar and show you but you can filter if you know you're looking for a certain network and of course not um, there's various different kind of filtering rules, almost like uh, you can think of like Wireshark, um, Ethereal, PCAP type thing, where you can look for certain traffic and have it filtered out in here. And uh, I've never gotten too, to be completely honest, I've never gotten too in-depth into the filtering, but I think that there are um, 
kind of like along the lines of Wireshark, you can filter more than just based off the source IP, obviously. So there's various different um, probably parameters that you can set in here and give arguments to and kind of see specific packets or, or log messages that are uh, based off of that. So um, logging is definitely a, uh, a good way to see what's going on if uh, something isn't working the way you think it should be working. Um, if you go back up into the top here, top menu, you can go to the tools menu item. Your uh, packet tracer, what, what packet tracer is going to do, let me start from the top I guess real quick. You got the command line interface and what that do does is dump you off into kind of a um, middleman between you and just your standard SSH connection where you can go ahead and select a bunch of commands that they have preset in here. Or you can go to multi-line, you can type whatever you want, like show run for example, and you can send uh, send that command to the uh, device and so that's kind of a way of not having an SSH in if you want to run something from the CLI packet tracer this one's kind of cool what it's going to do is you tell it uh, um, what kind of packet you're looking for what interface and uh, the source and destination to include uh, like the protocol or port that it's using it's going to go through this little visual uh, which you can thank God disable but it's going to go through this little visual animation of how it checks the route lookup access list lookup NAT lookup uh, VPN, quality service, outside access list, etc. Basically going through the steps it would take to forward a packet with the given parameters you set. And it will tell you if that packet will be, say, blocked by an access list. It'll let you know, and it will let you check out which access list is blocking it. Um, if there's issues with uh, NAT or VPN, etc., it's going to let you know if the packet's not going to make it. Okay, so that's kind of a good initial step to test as well if something doesn't seem to be working the way you want it to. Um, or it may get every, all the way through to the end and tell you that uh, it's permitted. So then you're kind of back to the, the starting step there if you're trying to troubleshoot something. Ping is ping. You're familiar with that and trace route as well. Uh, file management. Uh, check for ASA, ASDM updates. I haven't used this one in particular. I'm assuming it reaches out to some Cisco, kind of like a call home Cisco feature. Uh, upgrade software from local computer. I have used this before. You can basically upload your... Um, iOS or your uh, ASDM um, uh, kind of image files and then you can uh, put them on the device and then essentially upgrade your your operating system um, downgrade software backup configuration restore configuration system reload uh, administrators alert to clientless SSL VPN users honestly I'm not sure what that one does but Okay, I got you. So this is going to give them some sort of a message when they connect, I'm assuming. Or possibly it will let them know right now, any that are already connected, that uh, maybe you're going to reload a system or services are going down. That's kind of cool. Honestly, I, I haven't used that in production, but uh, it's interesting to know. Um, and there's a few others in here to include preferences with a lot of things that you can set up. Um, this checkbox right here that I was mentioning earlier, preview commands before sending them to the device. This is going to pop up anything that you try and apply before it puts it into the running config. And it's going to show you the CLI equivalent of what you're putting in there. So you can kind of see and, and uh, either one, learn if you're not familiar with how things work from the CLI as opposed to the ASDM. Or two, you can kind of put it into check and make sure that it's doing what you want it to do if you're familiar with how it all works from the CLI. So I like to turn that one on. Uh, pick that one up from a... Uh, uh, team lead at one of my uh, networking roles. Um, so that's generally it. You can uh, turn on and off different things that you can view from the interface. Uh, this thing, like I said, is Java heavy, so you have to be uh, running the right Java version to make it happy and get it to run right. Can't tell you what the correct answer is for that. It seems to vary based off different uh, versions of the ASDM and uh, different operating systems and Java versions and whatnot. You just have to do some Googling. Um, but that is your... Uh, that is your ASA, uh, ASDM interface and, and uh, where you would go to find or configure various components of it. Thanks for watching.